Uh, right now, uh, they're freaked out from being taken out of that situation, um, even though it wasn't a good situation. Um, it's all they know. A lot of these cats were most likely born there and uh, never know them any. We're six now, we still have traps set. So I heard more over there when I took the last out, so we're not done. Live traps, uh, they're humane traps. They're wire traps with a, um, a door on them and a, uh, I guess you would call it a lever or something. You put the bait, which in this case is just canned food, um, over on the other side of the, the foot lever. And when they go in to eat, they'll step on that and it'll spring the door shut and they can't get out. Found in it, and sometimes you'll get one that'll get scratched up and get a little bloody nose from it. But um, you know, for the most part, you know, it's the safest way to take them out of there. The dog is old, and um, again, hasn't been around anybody other than the original owner. The person that that this bull uh, um, that these belong to, unfortunately, um, is elderly, and she is also. Um, a vulnerable adult with some mental health issues. She um, she didn't realize there were this many cats in there. She uh, um, readily signed them over. You know, she didn't fight that at all. She knows that it was more than she can handle. Uh, the house has since been condemned, and she will not be going back. Um, very squalid conditions. A cat shouldn't have been living in there, let alone a person. You know, it is uh, really disheartening to know that somebody lived there whether by choice or she was forced to live there because she had no other choice. Um, fortunately now, social services, law enforcement, um, uh, the building um, uh, inspector, the whole city uh, has pulled together to get her out of there and to find a decent place for her to know is that we got a call from Officer Wittenberg on Saturday asking if we would like to help assist them remove 15 cats and a dog because the owner was in the hospital. And really, I don't know if it's so sad or the spooky thing about this whole situation is this was a little house in a nice neighborhood, looked perfectly fine on the outside. You drive down the streets and you wonder how many other ones are in this, in this city alone, you know, more in the county or the state. Um, it took this woman, you know, whatever the situation was, she ended up in the hospital, but it took um, whatever sickness or whatever that made her go to the hospital for this one to be discovered. And it kind of disappoints me because, you know, could this have been caught earlier and how could we have caught it earlier? You know, in this case, it was an elderly person. Um, in other cases, it might not be, but there have got to be people out there that know that thinks the conditions aren't right, and there's got to be a way for them to inform the public that, or inform the public officials that something needs to be done before it gets to this condition. If there's animals involved, law enforcement should be their first step, and they will bring in social um, services, and then we'll come in afterwards. Um, the health and well-being of the individual um, outweighs the health and well-being of the animals, of course. We are hoping that we will be able to adopt some of them out. Um, the unfortunate thing about this is that um, we had 60 cats in the shelter before we started taking these guys out. We're licensed for 60. Uh, the state of Minnesota will recognize the crisis situation and let us temporarily house these cats but it's um it can't be for very long you know they let us house them for a couple of weeks maybe even a month but it can't go beyond that um so we're at a situation now that we don't really know what to do with them we have contacted other shelters in the state um this is a bad time for cats everybody is filled they, you know we might end up going to our last resort which is that uh, some of them may have to be destroyed I don't believe there are any feral cats. Um, I think that they've all been socialized somewhat. Um, the socialization would go better in individual homes, of course, and it will be having, you know, 30-some cats in one room. Um, what we would ask if somebody wants to adopt, um, we would ask them to look at the ones that we had before first to give us a chance to work with um, 
these guys. Every one of our 60 cats from before, um, every one of those that gets adopted opens up a space for one of these. So in essence, if the person adopts a cat, they're saving two lives. And we'll negotiate on the adoption fee. You know, I guess I'm not really worried about us recovering um, for medical expenses. That primary concern is, you know, can we save, how many can we save, and what's the, in the best interest of the cats themselves.